Hi there folks, we are just showing up just a couple of minutes early to say hi, make sure everybody is ready to go, that you're either in the Facebook, Igneous Press Facebook, or the YouTube, or the Twitch. Um, I think we'll be live streaming to Instagram a little bit later. I don't think that that's actually going live right away. Um, we've got about one minute remaining and I'm going to begin the show proper. Uh, this live book launch for Richard Martin's Hobo Return, concluding the White Quartet series. I'm going to go ahead and start us up. Hello there and welcome to the live book launch for Richard Martin's Hobo Return, concluding the White Quartet series, the series of four poetry chapbooks begun in 2019 and we just, we're just now releasing the fourth book in the series. Thank you every single one of you for coming to this uh, event. Feel free to chat with us in the Facebook or the YouTube or the Twitch or wherever you are. Say hi. Uh, I am very honored to be presenting to you today a very special guest, a very special person to myself, to Igneous Press, to Igneous Press's founding publisher, Peter Kidd, uh, my father. Um, uh, Richard Martin is uh, a wonderful friend, an amazing poet. Uh, let me just tell you a few of the publications he's put out and a little bit about him. Uh, Richard Martin's most recent work is Hobo Return of the White Quartet, uh, Chapter and Verse, Spite and Doyle 2021, Ceremony of the Unknown, Spite and Doyle 2020, Martin is the author of Goosebumps of Antimatter, Spite and Dival 2018, Techniques in the Neighborhood of Sleep, Spite and Dival 2018, and the short story collection Altercations in the Quiet Car and Buffoons in the Gene Pool. Uh, so those are two uh, story collections with Lavender Ink Press and Fell Swoop. Martin is a past recipient of the National Endowment for the Arts uh, in Literature Fellowship for Poetry, and he lives in Boston with his family. Uh, I met uh, Richard Martin uh, when I was 14 or 15 years old, so just, you know, 30 something years ago uh, in my father's kitchen when he came to join the group of poets that would often convene in, the, in, uh, in Bedford, New Hampshire, where uh, Igneous Press began. And uh, so I met Richard then, and then I would see him at readings, at Stone Soup Poetry Readings in Boston, Massachusetts, or in Cambridge. Um, I'm sure that you're going to hear some wonderful anecdotes and stories from Richard Martin today. Uh, he's a very charismatic, very entertaining, a great reader, so again, really very honored to be presenting him to you. Hi there, Richard. How are you today? Sophia, good to see you and thank you very much for uh, hosting this. Um, and hi to everybody out there. I, I really can't see you. I'm, I'm talking to myself and enjoying it immensely already. Uh, but welcome to my turret. Uh, this is where I write, uh, sometimes sleep. And uh, I, um, you know, I, you know, all of us have spent a lot of time in homes and houses and rooms over the last couple of years. And I hope everybody has made it through uh, the pandemic uh, uh, healthy and uh, feeling, feeling better. And, and, you know, we can go forward and, and try to negotiate our way through this, uh, you know, mad world that we're in. Um, you know, I, you know, I go by, uh, 
the mirror every now and then. It's like right now, like I feel like I'm looking in a mirror and I always think, oh man, I think I look good. And, and then I see a photograph of myself and I think, oh, I don't really look that good. Uh, but uh, I got it all straight a little while ago uh, when I had to have my annual physical and I was getting an EKG, which was part of it. And the young technician, I just said, oh, I'm just getting older. And she stopped, she said, you can't use the word older. You can't use that. The older is not a word that you can use. You're old. And I, I said, well, how's my, you know, how's my heart look for, you know, how's the, how's the EKG look? It doesn't look very good either now. It doesn't look very good. So I, I think that aging is, uh, you have to have a sense of humor about it. Uh, during the time, uh, uh, the last 30 years, I came to know uh, Peter Kidd. Uh, when I came to Boston uh, with Eileen and uh, my family, and and I got to know him relatively quickly uh, through another friend, uh, Walter Butts and uh, James D. Crescentis and uh, Bill Kimmett, people I hung out with, uh, really two families of, of poets that I've had in my life, the Binghamton Community Poets, um, but, you know, all kinds of Tom Costello, Burn Mulligan, Tom Haynes, uh, John Miller, Phil Sweeney, Alexis Kocek. Uh, if I miss anybody, I don't want to, I, I, I apologize. But really two places that I've lived uh, my life as a poet, and I've been thankful for all the friends um, that I've met and the things that we've done. Um, and so here in Boston, uh, Peter and I be really became best friends over the, over the years. And a, a number of years ago, he came down with cancer, and uh, really serious cancer, multiple cancers. And he fought it, uh, he, his nickname is the bear. So, I mean, he fought it like a bear. I mean, he was unbelievable. Uh, and he called me down a couple times because he had moved to Texas because he's working on this uh, massive, uh, long poem uh, called uh, 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 The Human Condition, which I uh, will come out with the uh, Spite and Dival at some point. Uh, and he wanted me to read it and talk about it and all of that, and uh, I was happy to do it. Uh, at that time, Peter was always into the really short poem, one image, uh, a few lines, uh, all of that. I was never into that. That wasn't, you know, every now and then and everything like that. Uh, but one morning I got up and I just had a series of poems that came out. They were really short, little reflective pieces, uh, no big deal really. Uh, and they all came out in one sitting. And I took that manuscript uh, down to Texas, to Canyon, Canyon, Texas with me. And Peter liked it. He said, I, I want to publish it. And so um, that's how hard labor started. And uh, it became a series of four and it was um, labeled the White Quartet by Sophia because it's all cover stock white. Hercules, Hercules, Hercules Press uh, in uh, West Roxbury printed it. So. Um, you know, I just want to uh, acknowledge Peter uh, for everything he's done. He saw the first two chapters published, and uh, we're going to watch a video uh, of him uh, with the first two chapters, and he's going to talk about our friendship and read a few poems from uh, those two chapbooks. And at the, at the time, he's very sick. <laughs> He, he's, you know, he's not the bear I knew, but he's, he's a wonderful bear still. So I, I sit back and I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, I want to thank uh, Sophia for uh, creating it and Peter for being in part of it. And so uh, enjoy it and I'll come back and I'll read after the video. Thank you. Thank you so much, Richard. I'm going to play the, my father's video uh, now, it was, really was an amazing experience filming this with him uh, in the last uh, couple weeks of his life. Uh, he loves you so much, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and play that now. Start with the first and get some of it out. I mean, he's a very, very, very funny man, but very brilliant man. He uh, taught children for a living, became a principal. 
Peter Kidd was and is my great personal friend. I say is because Peter's still here. Not in the visible world, but Peter lived in three worlds all at once. And he had for a long time. He passed away from the visible world on June 12th. A great loss. Peter was absolutely magnificent. He was a supremely talented landscape artist, innovative poet, novelist, publisher, editor of Igneous Press, a family man, gigantic intellect, and the funniest man on the planet. I mean, just a wonderful, wonderful human being. And all of us who love him, miss him every moment. But he's here with us. I had a chance to be with Peter a couple times in Texas. One time I went down and listened to his, or read and listened to Human Condition, uh, a major work that's gonna be published, a poetic work that's gonna be published by Spoyton Dival very soon. And in fact, I had the opportunity to talk to Peter and Sophie the day before he died. He was all about the book and five novels he had ready to go. Plus, he uh, had just started, broken through to some new writing, something that I was very excited about, that came up to the standard that he expected of himself. And when I got done talking with him, I thought, oh my God, the guy is like just on fire. It was really a, a shock to realize that he passed away uh, the next day. But he had been ready all along, because he had talked to me about the visible world and death many times. All right, the title is Detective. Behind a bouquet of roses, the sky turns blue. My feet wet with dew. I spent the night in a tree, tracking your scent, wafting through leaves, impalpable breeze on my cheek. Breaking news, I needed my glasses to find the missing telescope, a forecast of green stars made the late evening they would rise above a forest of dreams. I checked my dreams at the door and entered the night. And you know, there's, this is, a, this is where poetry needs to go. It needs to get simple, clean, and in actuality, that's a, multi-layered poem, you know, that's, which reminds me, it's interesting, uh, some, of the, some of the good poets today do, in one stanza, what Wordsworth used two poems to do, and was revelatory, you know, pointing out the dual nature of human being. He'd write a poem, it stated one strong fact, and then you write another one that took the opposite point of view to show you how your mind worked. <laughs> Metamorphosis. I found my youth creeping across the road. How do you look now, it asked, handing me a mirror. Butterflies. Thoughts migrate from one mind to the next. Shortcuts of sky offer the best routes. Now oh, let's finish with Cosmic Sandboxes. That's the title of the book. It's a group of, uh, it's a group of um, uh, igneous books put, put out with Richard Martin. It's uh, printed by Hercules Press and West Roxbury. We're trying to keep it simple, use cover stock, keep the emphasis on the text. Um, and here's the last poem of Cosmic Sandbox, titled Cosmic Sandbox. I turned off the lights and the stars came out to play. It made sense to join in their games. All maps indicated I had arrived where I was supposed to be. 
Hard Labor, poems by Richard Martin, Igneous Press, Canyon, Texas. These can all be found going to our website, igneouspress.com. Uh, my phone number's on there. You can call me and I'll figure it out. We'll figure out how to get, get you a copy. It's been too noisy in my brain. I need the comfort of leaves falling from trees. I should abandon my chair, enter the wind as a leaf. Displacement. Objects surround me with their weight of light. How heavy is everything, really? Tons, we imagine, trying to move the simplest things to another place. But he always took our attention. His work was just, it was really great work, and it had a hook on it, and pe people loved it, and still love it. And he and a group of people in Binghamton put on a, a show called The Big Horror, and lots of great poets read there over the years. I know I read a couple times. Uh, Bill Kemet read, Wally read, um, well, Patricia Smith read, uh, Lloyd Van Bronck read, uh, Creeley read, you know, there's just lots of people. Jerry Rothenberg, I think, read there. It was, you know, it was a, it was an interesting crowd that passed through. And so Dick had a venue going on, and of course, so that meant he had lots of young poets that were hitting him up for his venue, just as I did at the Igneous. You know, you had to. What you learn, and Dick told me, and he was right, he said, what you'll learn is so-and-so wants to be your best friend because he wants to be in your venue. And Isn't it a bad thing? No, it's not a bad thing. He said, this is just how it works. Yeah. And they get in it, and they go in the thing, and you never hear from them again. Mm. And there's other souls whose the poetry is secondary. Mm. It's the soul to soul that lasts a long time, lasts a lifetime. And Dick and I would fall into that category. We saw each other and had a lot of fun with each other. You know, we find where, you know, you try to sell books, but the beautiful thing about small press and poetry is that it's, it, it, it really is a form of tithing, be it the publisher or other writers who pitch in, people who do typesetting, you know, even when they get paid, they get, they're getting paid a pittance of what their value is, and, and uh, you know, it, it, there's something loving I, that I love a lot about that, that if we started off as a cooperative press, and we're still a cooperative press, and I think that's unique, I don't know any other press that's done that for 20 years. Hi, Dad. Good, a good afternoon, how are you? I'm really well. I'm so glad that you could make time for us in your busy schedule. <laughs> my it's schedule being quarantined in my house here in Texas, like all, all over America, people should be. Right. Yeah. You're a really good quarantiner. I am, because I like home. It almost seems as if you've been like working up to this your entire life. Right, it is. It, 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 it's true. It's true. It's funny. You know, Martin is a Martin is somebody special, and it should be read. If if you humor as a metaphysic, as yeah, a, that's an interesting idea. Do you think it that is. goes back into classical uh, Greek aesthetic? It goes further than that. If you read, uh, and you ought to read it here because it's on your shelf while you're here. Read Rich Blevins' uh, review of, of uh, what was his other book, Boink? His review of Boink. Okay. Being a scholar, he takes you back and shows you where the history of this type of poetry began, you know? Mm -hmm. and, uh, but it's definitely, you know, I think it begins with the love for the oral, you know, because... Mm -hmm. I always said, Mark, you know, I used to tease him when he was younger. I used to say, well, you skip poetry and just do stand-up comedy. You know, at least they pay. What did he say to that? 
He loved it. He thought it was wonderful. Wow. He took it on for himself for Would a while. Would you tell us about what came first, you and Dick Martin or you and Igneous? Ooh, good question. We mentioned in our last video that Wally E. Butts was a big part of the early Igneous press. Right, and Wally Was Dick Martin to, also? Wally came in 76. To Stone Soup. To, st to Boston. What was the name of the venue of the Boston Poetry Stone State? Soup. Where was it held? Originally? It was on Cambridge Street, right next to the jail. Cambridge Street. And yeah. what was the name of the bar? Oh, we were in a bar. Jack had a bookstore downstairs and oh. an apartment upstairs. And I don't what was know. the name of the bookstore? Stone Soup. Oh, I see. And we held a reading there every uh, Thursday and every Sunday. Did you say Igneous came first? Or your relationship with Richard Martin? Oh, I have to think through that. I'd say my relationship with Dick. All right. Can you tell us about how you two met? Yeah, how you I ended up yeah, yeah. Books oh, I remember meeting Igneous. him. I remember the night I met him. It was at... Uh, it was at... Uh, the Green Street Cafe or Tap Room or whatever, mm -hmm. and uh, the front was a bar and the back was a room, and we'd hold a poetry reading on, uh, I don't remember, I think it was Monday or Thursday, um, in the back of the room, and Jack would ever see it, or one of his flunkies, and, and uh, so they, then if you wanted to talk, you go around to the bar side and you weren't interrupting the reading. And uh, so uh, I had met Dick while he introduced him to me that night. So I went down to have, to have a beer. And uh, Dick was followed me down and sat up beside me and we started talking. And that was the... You know, I, I remember right off, I remember what we talked about. I remember exactly what we talked about. I talked about um, that uh, the poem is actually the act. It's the oral poem that is real. It changes from word to word, you know. And uh, so, we, you know, we, talk, we talked about... The validity of the written poem and the oral poem, and a lot of what I was maintaining was that really good poetry in this period should be theater, should be theatrical. You know, it seems like that's what it needs. It needs something to lift it back up again, something theatrical and funny as hell. So what if you do a sonnet, do a sonnet that teaches you the form? Big deal. You're not gonna stay there. You know, you still have to find your own voice. about saying, and this poem's called, and this is usually by some kid who shared it with three people. So who's calling it this? The title of the poem is, let's move on to that. Welcome back. Here I am in conversation with uh, Richard Martin. Uh, actually, I'm not going to be conversing very much with him right now because I just cannot wait any longer. It's time for Richard Martin to do his magic uh, as a, a magnificent orator of, of, of poetry and very honored to have him here with us today. Thank you to Peter Kidd for his, uh, for his loving devotion to poetry and to his uh, good friend Richard Martin. <clears throat> uh, Richard, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand it over to you now. Okay, Sophia. All right, 
Um, a lot of pressure. <laughs> but uh, I want to say, uh, first of all, I want to, uh, on Cosmic Sandbox, I dedicated that to uh, uh, David Thornburg. And so I want to acknowledge that. Uh, uh, met David on uh, basketball court in Rosendale. He's also a uh, uh, professor of literature and media studies at MIT and over a, <laughs> over a, a drink at Doyle's, a famous uh, bar in Boston. He said, hey, you got to write some of these small poems. So I, I, I did. And, so that's how that got going. So thank you, David. Um, this uh, Citing Icarus is the third uh, chapbook. Uh, and this is in memoriam to Peter. Uh, you know, I, I, from upstate New York, from Binghamton, I mean, uh, spent a lot of years there and not near the ocean. And when I came to Boston, I spent a lot of time at the ocean with my family. Cape Cod area, specifically. And you know, you just sit there watching the waves and watching the birds fly, and it gets into your blood. You know, it just does, it just gets in. And then the pandemic uh, came and, um, you know, you're in your house, you're confined. Uh, so I, the solution I had was to fly around my house and, uh, you know, act like I was a bird. Uh, it was disturbing to my family, uh, but uh, I had to do it anyway. So uh, this is called, uh, uh, citing Icarus. Flight status. I'm strangely happy. My thoughts are wax replicas of the unknown. At night I burn them for heat and light. Nothing weighs me down. I soar through the house without notice. Splash. I'm inside myself rotating in a plane of numbers. We'll meet at the end of time, that's what you say. There are no mirrors to guide us, reflect who we are. Stars fall from the sky into ponds of recognition. Beach scroll. We think we're here, believing in the substantiality of thought. The ocean is slate gray with a white mustache of waves that extends for miles. I could piece shards of shell together to form a whole. I'm a fragment of something. I wish I knew. Buried. I'm looking for what is lost in the dim light of reverie. We share a beer or two, then walk across the water to our assigned places. The night is flat and placid. The gem you gave me drops from my hand into the water. You continue to shine before heading home. Instant metaphysics. The indelible delicacy of the unknown haunts being. Archetype news. I dive into a chamber of fish in the shadow of a primitive tree. It is a hostile night in the brain. The little boy who I was swims past me. I'm on a mission of recovery, one that requires vigilant silence. I check my book of secret codes and detours. When light enters the room, I surface. Missing. What is lost? is lost within the hidden. What's up with that? I ask my ideology. Lovers light amid flowers, bees approve, buzzing mindlessly. Saga of delight. We stay in bed for days to fill our senses with each other. Time leaves us alone. Eventually, I will forget my name. You will forget yours. We'll be perfect strangers in love. Option. Some retire into loneliness after a long and arduous journey. Others praise the sun, that the way it melts the sky into a feast of colors. Revelation. Night falls to pieces. The habit of fallen angels comes with the territory. At sunrise, I don my damaged wings, head for work. Disciple. Some days are an eclipse of memories. In the dark, I worship the sun, an apostle of light's sinking charm. 
from a window. The dark sea braces for light. Air is quiet, lonely with the flight of a solitary bird, probably a gull. Lovers inhabit what is left of the night until the sky bursts into flames and the sea sighs metallic blue. Age of romance. We fly into the sky before settling down in a tree for the night. We dream of a body exchange with each other. That's how close we are. Landscape. The open sky is a masterpiece. The past is black and blue. And the last poem, citing Icarus. I take off for the sun without bags or fear, kind of my thing. On a raucous day of crows, I lift from a rocky cliff, the air feather black. Confident the ocean is a net of dreams, I embrace my descent. So you can see they're just quick. They run as a series. Um, kind of wrote them in a day or two and just came out of here. Just it's like that Spicer said one time I, I read, uh, they asked him, you know, where, where are the poems coming from? He goes, oh, they come from many places. Uh, uh, well, sometimes they, uh, I turn on the radio and they come through the radio. And uh, other times they uh, I open the window and they come through the window. And other times Martians put them in my head. And I, when I read that, I thought, yeah, I, I, that, that's exactly how I feel. I, and he called it dictation. And I really think in many ways uh, that's what it is because I, I don't really try to control anything like that, you know, what the form, long, short, experimental, I, you know, whatever comes in uh, and whenever it comes in uh, at any time of the day, uh, because it's really, uh, you're getting messages and you might as write them down. Um, now, also during the pandemic, I, I had two uh, books come out from Spite and Dival, and I want to thank uh, Todd Tilleman, the publisher, for uh, publishing these books and my work. Um, but I also want to thank Joel Daly, XJ, uh, XJ Daly, uh, New Orleans, great, great New Orleans poet, uh, who was the editor of Fell Swoop for 35 years. I, you know, I, I should know because <laughs> we're friends, but a long, long time, okay? Uh, many, many issues. Uh, by himself, you know, with his own taste buds and everything else that he wanted to publish, he did. And now he runs something called the Moron Channel. Um, and he publishes published poems and stories and stuff like that. A lot of my poems and a lot of my stories in these two new books, uh, most of the stories were first published in a Fell Swoop magazine. And so I really, you know, appreciate that. And many, many poems, too, uh, over the years. So the first, uh, the first uh, uh, book is called uh, Ceremony of the Unknown, and, and, that, and that's the cover. It's like a really tremendous cover that uh, Todd did, and uh, Ceremony of the Unknown. And uh, so, hold on a second here. Yeah. Okay, so the first poem... Uh, I'm going to read from this is called uh, a predicament, often in him. I control nothing. This morning, the past walked by my bedroom window on stilts. When I close my eyes, the sky is green. I've written Van Gogh's ghost about the crows in my yard. I'm a fan of color. My head aches like a symphony orchestra in a tin cup. Bronze butterflies flutter in a wind of wayward kisses. Construction crews dig for a way out in the streets. There's too much news. Time faints on a bank of magenta clouds. I might be part of a text missing a pair of red shoe laces. I heard a new least recently discovered planet has volcanic hiccups. Forgive me for not following rules for building a clay replica of the ego hailing a taxi. I'm lost in a tailspin of beauty. Who is the past? Now the wine of machines and the flowers of air. It is a fall of dying leaves, and I resign in the mind of what escapes me. Uh, 
underlying fragments. This is kind of goes back to being a fragment and part of a broken shell. Uh, it's called underlying fragments. Form had a heartache after the discussion. The blue ribbon panel wiped the slate clean. I considered my options under the auspices of a perfect day, a sun of fused secrets, freestyle birds, the ability to camp in trees. Okay, a canoe of clouds passed overhead without a message. If rain, then gentle rain striking the polished mirrors of consciousness, who wouldn't wrap themselves in the blanket of sky? I stood in the inspiration line for hours. There was something to say, words in the street gathered in some small performances of what was possible. I could tap dance my way in tomorrow, bang drubs of misunderstanding and alarm. The option to mimic statues of silence presented itself. The past hung around, <laughs> flicked ashes of history into the wind. And this is um, chapter and verse. Uh, and that, that hand coming out of, um, you know, that's a poet, great poet in uh, Geneseo, New York, Dave Kelly, uh, who used to say when I was younger, when I knew him, that, that one day God's going to take his hand, he's going to come right out of the clouds, and he's going to grab you by the head, Dick, and he's going to pull you out. I said, isn't that called rapture? Not for you, it isn't. He's just going to yank you out. So I always, I kind of like that cover. I don't want to go that way, though. And I read a great book uh, by... Um, Kurt Anderson, um, actually two of them, Fantasyland and Evil Geniuses. But Fantasyland is about all the conspiracies and everything that uh, Americans have believed uh, since, we, since we've been here. I mean, just wild, wild stuff. And of course today, <laughs> you know, it's, it's pretty sick. Um, so anyway, that, this poem is called Vernacular of High Complaint. No chance to sleep. Storms of disinformation flood and captivate the mind like a siren song. A tsunami of lies batters and shipwrecks reality. Versions of visions plague the eyes. Apocalyptic politicians inject dark money into their veins, claim they saw Jesus exiting a convenience store with a handful of lottery tickets and an ivory-tipped cigar in his mouth. Some lawmakers fall to their knee knees when loaves of bread and Fish fly overhead like a squadron of blue angels. Trade wife and children for sackcloth, repent signs and surveillance cameras. It's been a tough year for the truth. There are so many cults and conspiracies to choose from, join or believe. I've worn the same green pants for a year and can't shake 10 followers. There's something about the color green and the holes in the pockets that radicalize them. In text messages and emails, they rail about my insipid leadership, swear by midnight seances and tea leaves and styrofoam cups, I descended from the green skies of the aura borealis to lead them into a per perfect spring of renewal, one of flowers and blossoms of love for everyone, a storm of blossoms to transform earth, one writes in the vernacular of high complaint. Take a little drink of water here. Maybe one more poem, and then I'll go to Hobo uh, Return. Um, two poems, okay. All right. I spent some time uh, in a cubicle and I wasn't very good at it. Um, I was in a computer center for a while, and I didn't know anything about computers, but I was a reading coordinator. And uh, this is, uh, Bern Mulligan is out there, if I didn't mention you. Uh, Bern Mulligan was also a community poet and a great friend who worked with me. Um, and um, it was interesting because as a reading coordinator, not knowing anything about computers, uh, Bern and I used to order things like the complete works of Wallace Stevens and Being in Time by um, Heidegger. And, uh, you know, my manager would come by and he goes, what are you doing? What are you, what are you reading? I said, well, I'm the reading coordinator. I showed him, the, showed him my, my plaque, reading coordinator. I'm reading. That's what I'm doing. That's what I think my job is to read. 
And of course, what I was trying to do was like work on comprehension for teachers and, and show them passages that were, you know, difficult and, 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 and think through. But anyway, you, you spin off in fantasies when you're in a cubicle for too long. And this is called Cubicle Soliloquy. It came out in, uh, just came out in Cafe Review, a really fine magazine out of Portland, um, Maine, uh, run by Steve Luttrell. Exiting a maze of memory boards, I entered a town whose gold-eyed inhabitants shed mirrors of distance during elaborate conversations. At the intersection of A and not A, a cloud of timeless clocks hovered above me like a portal to eternity. While considering my options, the mayor emerged from a sunflower in a garden of angels. Over cocktails during a rainstorm of rainbows, she explained the mantra of the town, its raison d'etre for existing. A woman of no particular age, her golden eyes gleamed kindness. Periodically, schools of colorful fish swam through her until replaced by a staccato of sunsets without warning. You see, in this world, she said, we honor the transience of beauty. She handed me a satin envelope and excused herself due to a prior engagement. I opened it and read, Get your head into the game and see if you know your meditation facts with this mindfulness quiz. P.S. LOL. When my manager clipped me on the back of the head, my laughter ceased. A faint glimmer of hope flickered on my laptop screen. Okay. Those are a couple new poems. Uh, and the last, uh, the last uh, chapbook, Hobo Return. Uh, and you know, it's about wandering. <laughs> you know, I, I, you know, Odyssey wandering, uh, ending up back in the same place or whatever it is. Uh, I have, uh, uh, as someone. People have told me, uh, you know, I had no plan in my life. I never really um, knew what I was going to do. And I, I always say, well, I, every, I always did what I wasn't wanting to do and doing it, you know, as best I could. And that's how I got through life. But I, uh, I uh, you know, it's just one of those things. I, I, didn't, I never said, well, this is my direction. But I wandered around and tried to find myself. On the run. I walk alone until I arrive where I'm not supposed to be. People are pleasant, rave they don't know me, happy to keep it that way. A jolly bunch, they chase me through yards and down streets with their security dogs. Some use epithets to describe me. Others hurl a cache of stones, precious as the jewels of night. Inclusion. We can't outwit time or death. They're part of the body like everything else. Animals maintain faith in the moment. Flowers sense the return. Rocks leak the infinite. Whatever is, is at home in the body. Getting around. Words on the page move to Arizona. Proofs of absurdity reach California. Sky stamps tickets to Kansas. Moon recites, and I'm in New York. Lexicon. I fall asleep by an eddy of words. Environment fluid but negotiable. Nouns shoot pool. Verbs hustle darkness. Adjectives modify nothingness. By definition, I'm undefined. My neighbors like this poem. Bone, log bone logic. My bones walk down the street to the alarm of those guided by purpose and logic. My bones are noisy with desire and refuse to keep quiet. Nostalgic interlude. We miss each other's bodies so thoroughly, it's time for the past to begin. Yesterday didn't die, it's here today in a change of costume. The future of love is impatient. Once we remove our clothes, we will be done with time. Peter Totter. I feed on the alphabet in waves of sound. Like birds, I'm not bound to the narrative of feet. Through portals of mystery, the journey proceeds. Love travels to its destination. A stance 
and direction. Pardon my appearance. I'm under constant construction. There are things to ignore in the noise of celestial parades. In the maze of choice, there are many dead ends to choose or avoid. Road to I travel among stars without an astrologer's blessing until I'm reborn. Eyewitnesses bloom, soar and swoop, run away. Note to self, time does speak. The ventriloquist in dreams as suspected. Thumbing awry. The world exists in the eccentricities of the mind. I'm here or was here, I'm here or was that yesterday I was here? Change plots direction, time forgives and forgets, the sky descends into the heaven of your smile. Sequence. The tattoo, the tattoo of light on my bones is a kiss. The coma of trees wakes into leaves. The lovers inside of me fade into obscurity. The future is busy with the present. Fulfillment. Emptiness brightens the soul. On wayward nights, the body floats in the sudden freedom of it. Stars attend to business ventures. The moon sleepwalks across the sky. Party on, Wayne. I'm amazed by what's been left behind or lost. Time peppers me with what has disappeared or been forgotten. I drink heavily on holidays to celebrate what I don't remember. Warning. Everywhere I turn, I'm in love with something. A dog barking at me, the drift of an autumn leaf to the ground. It's brutal. Soon I'll be a ticking bomb of optimism. My advice, keep your distance. I may be contagious. Hobo return. The physical world is my lover. I return to her because I never leave. Like a caterpillar into a monarch, I emerge to migrate whichever way the wind suggests. I'm winging it through your neighborhood now. Why not join me? So those are the last two chapbooks uh, in the set of four. Um, I hope that uh, you enjoyed them uh, and consider supporting the small press, Sabignius, uh, by like rushing immediately to the website and buying the whole collection. And also like uh, hand it, heading over to the website of Spoyton and Dival. Uh, you know, it's like one of these things, people that know me out there for years and years and years and years and years, we've run, run poetry uh, series for, you know, 13, 14 years, had all kinds of poets paid Paid, paid them, always thought the poets needed to be paid. And, you know, always try to sell books and everything like that. And we really need, yeah, it's just one of those things. I, I've been at a lot of readings that people will come up and, yeah, that's, I like that one and more, I like that one. And maybe they don't like a bunch of them. That's okay. Um, but go ahead and take the book anyway. <laughs> you know, uh, and so uh, anyway, thank you very much for everybody that came. I really appreciate it. Um, I hope to see you live sometime. I can't even see any of you right now, so you, no one might even be there. And this could be like uh, I'm in a hospital setting, and uh, <laughs> Sophia is my nurse, and uh, she's going to oh, no. clue me in. That was great, Dick, but uh, unfortunately, it's time for your medication. <laughs> and uh, so thanks, thanks, Sophia, because I could use some medication. Oh, gosh. What a wonderful reading. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. It, I, I find with your poetry, Richard, that you've been at this for such a long time and you've, you've really got a talent for writing poetry and you've been crafting that talent so that you have this ability to take each word as a sign, as a container for meaning and fill it with so many different meanings. And then that sign will be covalent to these other signs, also with their multifunctionality. 
so that when you put them together, you hear the same poem you may have heard 15 times, but you are going to feel something different, hear something different, think something different, recall something different. Are you aware that, that you do that? Are you, is that, has that been something? I have no understanding of what you just said. No, <laughs> I, no, I, no, I uh, you know, I, the, the um, look, you know, the thing is, is that, you know, you just, I, I didn't, you know, there's, like I said, there was no, uh, let's be a poet type of thing. I, I, I worked as an orderly and became an elementary school teacher. And, um, you know, I went to a couple of poetry readings and I decided to keep a notebook. I started to write, I started to put things down. And I think as you put things down and as you read more and more and as you come exposed to a lot, a lot of things and you can keep open and you're willing to, uh, take, uh, you know, I, I mean, I had a couple books, uh, published by Asylum Arts um, in the late early late 90s, early uh, 2000. And, and uh, Greg Boyd, who was the publisher, one of the reasons that he was interested, he liked the poems, but he said, you know, you're, you're past 40. And, you know, people writing poems past 40, that must be, that's kind of crazy. You know, because sometimes it's sort of a thing that people do when they come into it and they, they leave it. But that hasn't been the case with the poets I've met or the people that I've met. They've been... Mm -hmm. Uh, writing all their life, um, and they've been doing things all their life, uh, and sending things out, and um, getting acceptances, getting rejections. Um, uh, you know, I used to, you know, save my rejections for a while. I could wallpaper my uh, room with them, uh, but some of them were funny, some of them were harsh. Uh, but you, 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 you took your lumps and you kept going on uh, because there's a joy in writing. There's a joy. It's there's two things I love in life besides my family, and if any of my kids are out there, and my wife, yes, I love you, and I'm glad you're there. Uh, but the two things that I really love, and, and really kind of kept distance from any um, teaching, and, and people will say, well, that was your fault, uh, was poetry and, and, and sports, basketball in particular, because I love motion, I love mo movement, I love the flow, I love to uh, be in it. Um, you know, Olson, you know, he, he mentioned that, you know, the job of the poet is you, you transfer the energy from where you find it over to the listener or over to the page. And there's lots of ways of doing that. Uh, but I always felt this transfer of energy, this transfer, you know, words are energy, they're sound, they're waves, they're, you know, they're on the page, they're stable there, and they belong there, but they're also in the air, they're also moving. And uh, it's the movement and it's the gyrations and all of those things, uh, just like on the court, uh, that has my uh, imagination engaged. And so uh, that's how I, I look at it. I don't really have a lot of uh, you know, poetic theories or anything of those uh, natures. I, I write good and bad poems. And one of the things that your father was all about uh, was that he always called the vulnerable ones, um, you know, that they, they should be part of a manuscript, not just the greatest hits. And even, um, you know, I read some Ted Berrigan, and I know Joel loves Ted Berrigan. Uh, but Berrigan, uh, you know, reading about him, uh, he loved the things that people told him weren't very good. He loved his poems like they were children. And, uh, and he was fantastic. But, uh, you know, that, that, that kind of acceptance of, uh, you know, the good, bad, and indifferent, and, and just trying to keep going is the fun of it. That's the joy in it, because mm -hmm. you never know what's going to happen. You never know where you're going to go. In the poem uh, and, or in your life? Both. Yeah. You know, I mean, so like, you know, both. I mean, you know, I think of all these things that, uh, you know, I've met some poets along the way. Uh, you know, I was lucky, you know, through the series, I, I met Robert Creeley. And, um, <clears throat> you know, he said to me, uh, well, I read, I read it, but then he kind of, well, what he did say when he came to read to Binghamton, you know, I, I, I asked him, I said, hey, in Buffalo, you think you could read down at the Big Horror series? And he looked at me and, he, and I said, you know, I'm going to offer you $200. I know that's not enough. He said, oh, that's okay. That's where I, Binghamton is the town I thought I would commit suicide in. And I said, well, that, that's oh, great. You know, how about 150 You know, so he, <laughs> he, yeah. came, he, he you know, the, no, nobody could get in. He was there. Right. And he was wonderful. Right. I mean, he was wonderful with everybody. He was wonderful signing books and talking and being friendly and, and, and putting on a great thing. 
but you know he has a uh, it's either a poem or something he said i don't remember but you know you go out uh, you're going down the store uh, for a loaf of bread in your car and then you just keep on going you know you just keep on going mm -hmm. and so poetry is like that you just keep on going there's no end point there's no place to get to mm -hmm. there's no shining you know you've reached the you know <laughs> you know you're now in poetry you know there's nothing you're just on a road and it just keeps going mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's the fun of it yeah yeah so I wanted to just let you know, Richard, and you're going to find out soon enough, but we've had a wonderful audience with us during this entire uh, live cast. Um, you're, a lot of your good friends, uh, Carrie and Neil, have been commenting, Deb's been commenting, Jack Foley's been commenting, um, Deb Ewing's been in there commenting, getting back to people, Vincent Spina, uh, lots of people uh, are here in 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 the live cast and and have been enjoying what you're doing and then after we're finished probably by tomorrow i'll have uh the recording of this put on the Ig the igneous facebook page and the youtube and the twitch and the instagram so people can watch it again and you can see it and see all the people who commented and have been here with well, you me, let me just let me just say a couple things let me say hi okay. to carrie and neil because they're you know like you know fantastic and they, they ran a wonderful uh, uh, magazine, Well Magazine, and they were they came down to Binghamton Reed, and they're just they're just great people. And uh, you know, Carrie uh, just had a tremendous reading uh, for her book that just came out. Um, and uh, I just uh, you know, they're just and Neil Wright, they're both right, and you know, we get along and, and have a lot of fun together. Uh, and uh, you know, all the other. Uh, folks that are there that I know I, I really appreciate it. I, I miss you all I haven't seen you in a long time yeah. um, hope to I am coming to Binghamton uh, on June I believe it's June 10th or June 11th it's Saturday I'll be reading there at Tom Haynes's place Atomic Tom's oh wonderful that'll be, that'll be the first reading June 11th also, you say yeah I'm also I'm also going to read in September at, 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 this is great at, at right at uh, Neil and Carrie's house oh. uh, I'm going to read from uh, chapter chapter and verse and uh, I'm also going to uh, be reading out at uh, San Diego State uh, University in September uh, thanks to Stephen Paul Martin a friend of mine in California who I've communicated through books I mean emails and stuff like that but we've traded he's a fantastic uh, writer, fiction writer, and uh, and uh, I'm going to read out there thanks to him. You know, it's cool. just I, I want to thank. I, I can't see any of you. I mean, I'm just seeing my face and so, uh, Sophia's, but who are all there? And my brother, everybody. I really love you, and I really, really appreciate that you came. And um, you know, I look forward to. I'm. I. The bottom line that I'm trying to do, <laughs> is, um, you know, my. I think my my son Joe might be out there tonight. Uh, from he's in Panama, uh, and wow. my daughter Melissa, she's in New York. Uh, they're in their forties, and my uh, youngest daughter Nicole, my wife Eileen. Uh, Nicole graduates uh, next week, and, I, and I'm just trying Congrats. to get oh in May, two weeks in May, and I'm just trying to get through uh, the the variant to get to the graduation. And whatever happens after that, fine. I want to come back out and live my life. I'm really tired of being in the turret. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. see everybody soon. That's wonderful. I'm so glad to hear that you'll be out and about and more people can see you and feel you in the room with them reading. Um, and I'm so thankful for you making the time to be here with us online um, and being patient with me as I figured out some of the technology and stuff. But, um, I, I want to, I just, you know, I, I thank you very much. And like, really, you know, just, it, it's all like a, it's a, it's a, like your father said, I'll leave with, with Peter. Okay. Peter had this big view of constellations like that. Binghamton was a constellation, New England and what he was running was a constellation. Uh, Daly and New Orleans was a constellation. Mm -hmm. And, uh, these were all, um, uh, uh, powerful, um, underground more or less uh, uh, poetry events series uh, magazines and they're all connected in some way I mean yeah. and Peter always saw uh, uh, 
um, those connections and those lines and those lights. And uh, he brought that, uh, you know, to a really uh, focal attention. And those constellations continually grow. And I have to say, and this is the last thing I'm going to say, um, you taking over uh, Igneous uh, from your father and taking it, uh, you know, bringing it online, developing a web page and all of these other things that you've been involved in, plus everything else you're doing as a scholar and your own work is remarkable. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate it. And so thank you very much and good night to everybody out there. Thanks, Richard. It's it's always my pleasure. It's such an honor to have known you my whole life almost, and and to to have done this with you here today. So um, thank you again, and uh, I'll be in touch with you real soon. And best of luck with you with your readings coming up. Bye bye. Everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hi everybody. I just want to pop on and say hi and thank you for coming out to hear Richard Martin's readings from the Hobo Return, the last book of the White Quartet series, and also citing Icarus, which was the third book, the first book that uh, I ever brought out with the press with uh, Richard Martin. And, uh, and then for listening to Peter Kidd, my dad, read from the two books that he brought out with Richard Martin of the White Quartet. Uh, the first one was Hard Labor in 2019 and Cosmic Sandbox in later that same year. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for all your comments. Thanks for sharing the event, for uh, spreading the word about it, for spreading the word about small press, for for being devoted to poetry. I would say that above all, and uh, for filling your heart with love and sharing it uh, with yourself in the world. Thank you, and uh, have a beautiful day. Bye-bye. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we can talk.